I love to read month and National Quilting Month, so I thought I'd do a fun little project as I wait for some fabric to come in and make a quilted reading pillow. And so I'm going to do a little tutorial on how I made this. Um, it has a deep pocket for um, just about any thickness of book, um, a carrying handle, and then the back side um, has an envelope flap to tuck a pillow inside. Um, and then the main fabric is quilted. And so I'll show you how to do this. Um, this pillow is featuring some Sarah and Duck fabric, which is my three-year-old's favorite cartoon. And I was able to find some prints um, inspired by the show with the sea cow on the back and uh, Sarah's hood, uh, hooded sweatshirt that she wears on the front. And then I just had to find some ducks that kind of resembled the one in the cartoon. So, um, but this is a pretty large book and yeah, it tucks in nicely there. It's great for traveling and um, using on the road. So let's get started. Here are the fabric requirements for this project. More details can be found in the free PDF guide on my website, aquiltingtail.com. This picture has optional material measurements. If you want to quilt the main fabric, you'll need a scrap piece of fabric and batting. To stiffen the pocket, you'll want a piece of fusible fleece interfacing or batting. For a handle, you'll need a thick, one inch wide ribbon. If it doesn't coordinate well with your fabrics, you'll want a scrap piece of coordinating fabric to wrap the ribbon. Again, exact measurements for each piece and other considerations are in the free guide you can download from my shop. Let's go ahead and get started with the first steps of the pillow. I'll see you back at the sewing machine. As you can see, I have fused my fleece onto the back of my interior pocket fabric or the lining of the pocket. Um, and then I'm going to place my outside pocket fabric um, right sides together with the lining fabric and if you have a directional print um, you want to make sure that the top of the fabric is facing upward here so um, you can see I already stitched a line and then realized that my needle wasn't thread so <laughs> I have a line to demonstrate um, we'll be doing a quarter inch seam so you'll want the uh, directional fabric pointing up to the um, where you're going to be sewing. Um, I have this little piece of trim as I mentioned yours would will most likely be one solid piece of fabric for the lining but if you happen to do a trim piece like I did you'll want it to be over an inch thick um, and you'll want that up toward the top too. So at the bottom, you should have an inch sticking out of the lining fabric. So you can put a few pins in it if you'd like. Just to hold it in place and keep it aligned. So I'm going to make sure my edges are as aligned as can be. I'll try this again. I tested my machine this time to make sure that the needle was thread, so hopefully you won't have that happen again. Um, let me just get all aligned on the edge here. And so I'm just gonna sew my quarter inch seam again. And I just like to stick a little bunny tail through. <clears throat> all right, that's my bunny tail. It looks like I hit my original line pretty well there. So the next step is going to be to take your fabric and you want to line the two bottom edges together like so. Um, so line them up the bottom edges and then you're going to press along the top 
And as you can see, I have a little bit of my trim showing, which is good. I, if I um, didn't, then I know I didn't cut enough. But on this side, you'll see when it's pressed that I'll have that trim piece showing at the top. So I'm going to pause here to press it, and I'll come back and show you the next step. My trim piece is showing, so the next step is to just make a straight stitch um, right below the trim, so right on the edge of this white fabric here. I'm going to just make a straight stitch to tack it all together. And since my thread is already white, I'm not going to change out the color, but you might want to change your thread color if you think it'll look better. Okay, so I've got my line going across here. And so the next step will be attaching this pocket to the front of the main fabric in a moment, but I'm gonna show you an optional step here. If you're interested in giving the main fabric a quilted look, we're gonna pause to do that next. But if you don't want the quilted look and you just want the smooth fabric, um, then you're going to be basting or pinning this pocket onto the front. But um, like I said, we're gonna do some quilting with it because it's not only I Love to Read month, but it's also National Quilting Month, so we're gonna put some quilting into this pillow. All right, so I just drew diagonal lines. I used um, this pen that the ink disappears with water and I'll have to link um, where I got it. Um, I know I got it off of Amazon about a year ago and so it leaves a blue line but it comes off if you spray it with the iron or in the wash or I have my daughter sometimes get a little q-tip with water and erase the lines for me afterward. But draw a diagonal line from corner to corner and I decided that two inches apart is the quilted look that I liked. Um, I tried one inch to see what that looked like and I thought that might be a little too much quilting. So I just did um, diagonally across um, two inches um, from diagonal to diagonal on both sides. And then I have my quilted sandwich here, the uh, right side up for my main fabric with the diagonal lines. And I have my batting in the middle, and then I have my scrap fabric um, on the bottom with the right side facing the bottom, so both right sides facing out. And so remember, we will trim this down to 16 by 16 inches when we're done, so it's okay if they don't line up perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and just start quilting along the diagonal blue lines here. my main pocket quilted and a couple of things I wanted to mention um, before if you don't have a pen to mark with you could also use painters tape or masking tape um, to give yourself a line to stitch next to and then just take it off when you're done um, to baste your quilt sandwich together if you didn't want to do a basting stitch you could pin it or I like these wonder clips that I got for Christmas a couple years ago come in a nice tin and so they hold it taut and nicely together all right so now we're going to take our 17 by 17 inch piece and trim it down to 16 by 16 um, with mine, because I have these vertical lines, I want to just make sure that my first cut runs parallel to one of these lines. So um, I'm going to start at this pink line here, and that's going to be 
kind of my guide for um, my straight line. So now I'm going to take um, my straight edge here and just align it to the a straight line on my ruler and pick a spot. It looks like the 19 inch mark here to 19 inch is going to be my straight line. So now I have a 16 by 16 inch square. At this point, I can remove the blue line. I might just get some water and take it off. But once I do that, the next step is going to be to either baste or pin my pocket that we made earlier. Um, I'm gonna line up the bottom edges. And so remember, if you have a directional fabric, just make sure that the top of your fabric is up here, same with the top of your pocket. Um, but I'm gonna just stick a few pins in it and I'm gonna actually um, stick them in so that they're not poking out of the sides of the fabric. But I'll just go around and um, just do the three edges that are going to get sewn. So I'm not gonna pin um, the top part of the pocket, but just pin along the three edges here. Um, I'm going to take my blue lines off first, but that will be the next step. So I just wanted to show how easily that blue marker comes off. I just dip a Q-tip lightly in water and it just vanishes. And I've yet to have a piece of fabric that this pen doesn't just seem to dissolve off of. So it's a really nice pen for that. Now I'm going to prepare the outer envelope portion of the back of the pillow. And so I'm taking my 16 by 12 inch piece and you can pick either side. Um, remember that the 16 inch length um, is the side that should be running up and down if you have directional fabric. But what you're going to do is just take one side and fold it over so that the wrong sides are together about a quarter inch. And then we're gonna just iron it. So fold and iron a quarter inch. And then we're gonna do it one more time. So just fold it to the edge of the fabric about another quarter inch. And do the same thing. I'm just kind of using my left hand to readjust it as I go. And then we're going to take it to the machine and sew a straight stitch just right before the edge of the fabric there. I've got the straight stitch going along the edge now. And one thing to note if you have directional fabric um, if your hem is at the bottom, you're going to want the top of your directional fabric on the left, and so the bottom on the right. I'm going to skip a step for right now doing the second flap of the envelope because that will require a zigzag stitch. So instead I'm going to do my handle now, which is the last straight stitch I'll do for this project. So I'm taking my 3 inch by 18 inch piece of fabric to wrap the handle and remember you don't have to do this if you found a ribbon that coordinates with your pillow but I'm gonna just fold one end of it down maybe about a quarter inch
And again, just kind of fold it down with my left hand as I go. And the ends aren't going to show, they'll be in the pillow, so it's okay if it's not exact. And then I'm gonna take my ribbon and I'm just going to fold it up so the bottom is just partly covering it. And then I'm gonna take my uh, pressed top and fold it down as well. And then you could pin it or use wonder clips to kind of hold it in place. Um, just make sure you pull it evenly. And what we'll end up doing is taking it to the sewing machine and just doing a straight stitch just above um, the fold line here to hold it in place. And you could do a double line if you want it to be a little more decorative. Um, but I'm just going to finish pinning it and get it to the machine to sew. Alright, so I've got my handle stitched. Um, I did two stitches here. Um, it was pretty thick, so, um, but I got the two lines parallel to each other. And so now I'm going to swap out my foot to do a zigzag stitch. So the rest of the pillow you'll need to do zigzag. All right, so now I'm taking my 16 by 9 inch piece. That's the, going to be the underlapping portion of um, the back, the little envelope fold that we're making for the pillow. And so if the right side is facing you, you're going to want to sew a zigzag stitch down the left hand side, so the 16 inch length just as close to the edge as you can get it. This concludes part one of my tutorial. Make sure you watch part two for steps 10 through 13, which include assembling and finishing the pillow.